All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Roman Goltz. I'm with the Bendix Customer Solutions Group. And this afternoon, I want to talk to you guys about a few very simple and easy diagnostic modes when it comes to diagnosing trailer-related troubles. So what I have set up here is a trailer ABS unit. It's a very simple setup. I've uh, just connected two wheel speed sensors at the end. That's what these gadgets are. I'm uh, using a regular power supply to show you this. Um, obviously, I couldn't fit a trailer in this booth, a little tight. Uh, and what we're going to be talking about simply is the trailer lamp that's going to send out some blink codes whenever there are issues. They could be related to the wheel speed sensors or the module itself. And I'm also going to talk to you quickly about the TRDU or the trailer remote diagnostic unit, which is this little gadget right here. There are many ways that a Bendix product can be troubleshot with the tools that we provide in the field. Those are two of them, the lamp being the most simple, the TRDU being a little bit more advanced because it gives you some additional options and it's easier to read out what's going on on the unit. And then finally, we also have our diagnostic software. It's called ACOM. 6.5 is the latest version. We do have a booth set up for that as well. In order to run that, you would also need a data link adapter. It's one of these units here. It essentially allows the truck or the trailer to talk to the laptop. And then you would have an interface cable for that also. So to start simply, what I'm going to show you is how this unit would operate normally when you first power up the trailer. So we're going to give this a power. And you hear that noise. That's the chuff test. The valve is simply just going through a self-check. The trailer lamp, as you might have noticed, it's going through a bulb check. So it's going to light up for about two and a half seconds. If there are no existing issues on the system, it's going to turn off and stay off. So if I'm the driver and I'm looking in my rear view mirror and I see that rear left corner of the trailer, that's where that would normally be mounted, that'd be one of my first pre-checks I would perform as I power up the system. If that lamp turns on and stays on after the initial bulb check, we know there could be an issue. So the next step I'm going to show you is how we can diagnose what the problem is. To do that, simply what I'm going to en end up doing here with the setup is I'm going to just disconnect one of these wheel speed sensors. They just unplug. And I'm going to leave it unplugged. This would indicate, for instance, a broken cable, the connector has come off, the sensor itself might have failed, um, anything of that sort. And again, these are easy issues to troubleshoot. You don't have to right away go to the laptop or a technician. You can simply look at the lamp or the TRDU if you have it available and make a quick determination which wheel speed sensor is it that's giving you the issue. Now, in order to read that out from the lamp when we first start up the power on the trailer, you'll notice it'll go through the bulb check. And as the driver gives it power, the first thing he needs to do is pump the brake pedal three times within the first 15 seconds of turning ignition on. And that will cause the lamp to call out its trouble blink code. So I'm going to show you this right now. We're going to power up. The lamp's going to go into bulb check. And then I'm basically just going to simulate pressing the brake pedal one, two, three times. Now, hopefully, this was enough to get it started. So there the lamp goes off. And next, it's going to go into blink mode. One, two, three. Pause. One, two, three, four. And it's going to continue with the bulb check and then stay on permanently. So that blink code that you notice there, the three blinks first, a pause, and then four additional, we have a little sticker table available. That mounts usually right above the trailer lamp on the trailer corner. And now the driver or the maintenance tech can refer to that table. There's two columns in the table. So the we look up the first column with how many blinks we had before the pause, in this case three. And right here it says sensor SR, or right side sensor, in this case curbside. Right side always in the driving direction, obviously. So we know something is wrong on the right side with the sensor, but what is it? The second set of blinks, as you recall, was four blinks after the pause. We go to the other column. And right now, 4 says sensor shorted or open, which is exactly the scenario that we have here. It's shorted. There is no connection. It's not responding. So without having to crawl underneath the trailer, trace the lines, put on a voltmeter, or anything difficult like that, we just look at the lamp and that initial blink, check with the table reference, and you already know that's the point you've got to diagnose. Saves you a lot of time. You don't have to worry about a laptop. You don't have to worry about other expensive diagnostic tools. So that's the first method. Again, if I now reconnect, and these are keyed as well, those connectors. So you get it, just make sure you get it in the right way. I'm going to push it all the way in. Make sure the connection is sound. 
We let the system power off. It takes a few seconds. You'll notice the lamp. I've already turned the power off. The lamp will slowly die down. I'm going to wait a few additional seconds. Now, also notice, this time when I turned the module on with that disconnected, what did we not hear? That clicking sound at the beginning, right? So that was missing. And that, everybody needs to remember, isn't an indication that the whole module is now broken or defective. A lot of people make that mistake. They think, oh, I didn't hear a chuff test. The valve must be faulty. It's not the case. When we are in that diagnostic mode, the valve check is not done at the beginning. That chuffing isn't completed. That's just because it's busy calling out the blink codes on the lamp. Now, if I've reconnected this properly, hopefully, as I power back on, we're back on, everything is good. And you notice, too, the lamp quickly turns on, it turns off, stays off. So system diagnostic and the troubleshooting is now complete using the lamp. Secondary method would be to connect the TRDU. Now, this little gadget is actually following a 9-pin J1939 connector on the back. And in order to interface that normally on a trailer, you'd go to the front of the trailer where you have your glad hands connecting and the trailer power. Most of you are probably familiar with that connector right here. That's the standard 7-pin power connector on a trailer. You would pull off the main line on the trailer and insert this T-piece. So again, it's got the keyed indicator on the top. You push that in and then reconnect trailer power as you normally would. And what that adds is that additional breakout piece, that's a J1939 type connector, 9-pin connector, and that allows you now to put on the TRDU. Again, these are keyed as well. You see there's a little slot cut there. So just set it on there. You rotate until you feel the fit, and then push it in. For the purpose of this demo, what I've simply done is I've added a piece of harnessing here with the same connector at the end. Makes it easier. So what I'm going to do right now, the system is already OK. Everything's fine. I'm going to connect it anyways. And we're going to take a look at what this little unit actually does. So you notice as I plugged it in, we see some blinking lights, and we get a green status indicator at the top for voltage. Everything's OK right now. System is fully functional. We have an additional small blue light that once in a while blinks on that side. That's the miles we've accumulated in that unit in thousands of increments. So depending on what that blinks out, if you have 99,000 miles, it'll just blink out 99 on that little LED. Not that important. But one thing you will notice is there's all these little abbreviations on the perimeter right here. We have SEN for sensor, RHT for write, and so on. Also, on the side of it, we have a wraparound sticker with the actual words written right out. So very easy to follow. You don't need an additional guide to, to understand that. Now, what happens if I simulate the same fault we had before? So I'm going to pull off the sensor. Now the module is going into a fault, and you can see right here the red LEDs now that are lighting up. So let's take a look on the perimeter of the unit where we're lighting up the faults. So we have RHT, if everybody can see that. That means right side, again, curbside. That's the unit I pulled off. And we also have an additional light on as SEN, or sensor. There's the label right here. We can see that clearly. Extremely easy diagnostic. That unit right now told me within seconds of that fault happening would be the same if I just turned power on the trailer and I had that T-piece connected. It tells me right away it's the right-hand sensor that, again, has some type of fault. Either it's disconnected, broken, and may need replacement. Now, here's an additional piece that we included. If you now leave power on on the unit and you fix the problem, I'm going to fix it simply by plugging the sensor back in. And I'm not going to power down this time. You notice also, while I'm connected here this entire time with this little unit, the lamp, instead of doing the blink code once now, it continuously keeps repeating the blinking pattern. It's saying, hey, you have a problem, you have a problem. So you have that as an added benefit as well. You can double check through the trailer lamp that this unit is, in fact, calling out the right information. Once the sensor is reconnected, what we've done on this unit is we've included a little Hall effect sensor at the top. That simply means you can reset the unit using a magnet. So you could use a little shop screwdriver with one of those magnetic tip ends and place it over the front of this. But another little uh, tool tip for your shop would be keep an old wheel speed sensor. Just cut the wire off and keep that end in your toolbox because that actually has a magnet in the tip of it. It's a lot easier to remember keeping that in your toolbox and trying to fish out a little magnet from somewhere. And watch what happens. I'm going to place the magnet over the front of the unit See all those lights light up in the circular pattern? Now when I remove it, hear the unit? It fixed itself. Essentially, I've reconnected the sensor now. It has a new sensor on it. 
I've now actually cleared what was what we call an active fault code. So the system had to be reset via that little magnetic tip on the front, and it did a new self-check, and you heard that, that tacking noise, and also now the lamp is off. So I could do all that without even having to power down the system. It would have been the same if I powered down, cleared it, and then powered back up. Any, any way you run that procedure, it's fine. But the key here is you can reset it using the magnet over the front and then just simply pull the unit off, remove your T-piece in this case from the trailer, and you're all set. So we did all that for one sensor. You can do the same thing for two sensors or an ECU issue on here. The limitations of this uh, little guy are that it can only do one fault at a time. So if you have multiple faults that exist on your trailer system, fix the first one that shows up, apply the magnet over the front, then the system will go through a new self-check. If there's additional sensors, for instance, unplugged, if I pull the second sensor off as well, the next time it resets itself, it will now show me the next one. So in this case, it'll go to the left side and SEN or sensor. And it'll just step through them all until they're all done. So again, you can do multiple diagnostics with very inexpensive tools. The lamp already comes on every trailer. That's a standardized uh, part that comes as long as the uh, ABS unit is installed. And the TRDUs are pretty inexpensive to get. They're easy to store in a toolbox. Same with the T-junction piece. So we've done all this without ever touching a laptop. Keeps your labor costs down because you can do that really quickly. You don't have to wait for it. Um, and also, you can have multiples of these around the shop. So if somebody's busy using a laptop for programming somewhere else and you only have one unit, because the DLA units, they're not cheap either, have a couple of these on the side and you can do quick diagnostics. Also, great to keep in the glove box if you're a single truck operator and you're out there on the road, you don't afford, can't afford a laptop to bring with you or expensive diagnostic tools, keep one of these handy, plug it in, and right away you could get some pretty intelligent uh, information. For more on this and also these tutorials that we have here, check out um, www.break-school.com. That's our new video tutorial site. You can sign on there for free, no charge. And all of these tutorials we're doing here, including a whole lot more on installation, troubleshooting, parts replacement, it's all on there available for you to watch. And that's free. So check that site out. Are there any questions? No? You guys have been a very good audience, very quiet. <laughs> All right, that's it for the presentation. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you very much.